Jack, um, I know you're not an engineer, but you've been around this. Can you tell us unequivocally that a larger blade makes more noise? Do you know that for sure? No, I don't think you do. No. No, please tell me if you do, because well, we're weighing our matter here. Excuse on the me, side. Sorry. You're making a, a statement yeah. that a larger blade. I just want to know, right. and believe me, and folks out there, if that's a real issue, we will tackle that. If that noise was based on a smaller blade, and now it can be proven these bigger blades, I don't know that it is. I know that a larger car makes less noise than a four-cylinder four Ram Ford versus a Lincoln. So I don't know if that is a hill of beans or anything. I think you're insinuating that a larger blade makes more noise and therefore <laughs> fail. I, I need to know that answer because that's very germane to what we're talking about. You may notice that I don't use the word noise. I use the word sound pressure. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt in my mind that a larger turbine blade cutting through a larger swept area is going to create stronger sound pressures. And they will emanate farther from the turbines than a smaller blade turbine. Uh, I don't mean to challenge you. That's an attorney's opinion. Do you know that engineers will corroborate with what you're saying? It's very I, important to me. I'll tell you exactly how I know that. I sure. call Peter Goldberg. He is the president of Tech Environmental Inc., which did the acoustical analysis for the abdominal turbine. And I said, Peter, I would like to talk to you about that acoustical study you did in June of 2010. I said, I question it. And he said, well, tell me, what turbines did they build? And I said, the Gamesa 90. He said, well, then my study is invalid because it was based on a smaller turbine. So here's the guy who wrote the study telling me, actually, what his words were are, are as follows. Don't tell me they built larger turbines than what I said. With Mr. Ruiz in the front row, Chairman Kazan, which on TV it looked like with tears in your eyes, begged Mr. Ruiz to help, to effectively do your job. You said to him, and I quote, these people are suffering. Is there anything, anything you can do? Mr. Ruiz's attorney came up and stood at this podium and said, we got a plan. We will help you. We will develop a plan to mitigate the problem. Give us a week. In reality, those guys came in here looking for one thing, and that was a vote to do nothing. And they would be willing to say whatever it took to end up with that vote and they got it. And they walked out of here, and two weeks later, wrote to the board and said, we're not gonna do anything. No plan, no mitigation, no help, no nothing. We're gonna wait until CEC gets around to scoping this project, and then further, when the tests are done, and then further, when the analysis of the tests are done, at that point, maybe we'll consider complying. Really, really frustrating. And the other thing was watching Mary O'Dowell's attorney came up here. I mean, at least he didn't have the gall to lie to you guys, right? What he did is he threatened you. He basically came up here and said, if you vote tonight to turn off these turbines, there is going to be a multi-million dollar lawsuit in this town. <coughs> That's sort of what Mark Beaton said in his piece the Friday before the meeting, right? Harking back to tearing down some guy's house when he was out at lunch, right? I've been the defendant in one of Mr. Units' multi-million dollar lawsuits. He sued me and a group of other residents who were just simply appealing the Zoning Board of Appeal decision for 13 million bucks. I filed it like a week before Christmas. It was awesome. Christmas cocktail party time, right? He was trying to bully us into dropping our appeal for fear that he was going to sue us for 13 million bucks. We laughed at him. We looked at his complaint. It was completely baseless. So, have at it. And he ran to the court and pleaded that they allow him to dismiss that counterclaim. Unfortunately, in this case, the bullying worked. We're so afraid of taking action, the right action, that we know is right. We're afraid of the consequences. And that's really unfortunate. You know, and the last thing is, we continue to take the legal advice of Mr. Tolliver, 
who I've said a number of times, I have a great deal of respect for, I really enjoy watching him work in court, um, but he's too close to the matter. He championed the turbines, he negotiated the contracts. I mean, doesn't it make sense that we actually have representation for the residents of Kingston? I mean, if you think back in negotiating the contracts, if there was somebody watching out for the residents, don't you think that there would have been mandatory post-construction monitoring to ensure that the guesswork, the studies, the projections were actually accurate? But there was no such thing. It was get the turbines in and get them done. It's almost unfair to put Mr. Tallon in that position. To now say our crowning achievement is one of the largest public health failures in the Commonwealth. And I only say one of because our friends in Falmouth have had the common sense now to put on their town meeting agenda a vote to actually move them. I mean, it just, it, it strikes me as, as just inappropriate. Because, I mean, look, we've all been on head jury duty. We've all been triers and weighers of fact. Think about this, just from a common sense perspective, right? If you took a vote to turn the turbines off, there's no question that both KWI and no fossil fuel would have appealed. Not sued you for 13 million bucks, but they would have appealed the decision. So it then goes into court. And the court says, Mr. O'Donnell, what evidence do you have that you constructed these turbines in accordance with the plans? And I've got the, the acoustic studies that basically say that the, that the increase in ambient sound pressure will be less than five decibels. That's the Mary O'Donnell. Do you know what five decibels is? It's human breathing. Mr. Brown, you were out at the turbines. Did the noise sound like human breathing to you? You don't have to answer. This is rhetorical. But, right, they'll say, well, we've got to study. Well, it's not really the turbine that we built. And it says that it's only going to increase it to the point of human hearing, okay? Then you have Dorian Rudd and Lisa O and myself and the wheelers. And you have a parade out the door of the courtroom of people willing to come in here and say, I can't sleep in my house because of the noise. When you go home tonight, sit your family, look them in the eye, and say, if it was you, they couldn't stand another day because of another sleepless night. If it was your kids that you were sending off to school to underachieve on their exams because they can't keep their eyes open, if it was your pregnant wife that's on medication as a result of a noise that's not supposed to be more than a human breathing, tell them, look them in the eye and say, I wouldn't do anything more than I'm doing for the people in Kingston. I would wait for the process to play itself out, right? I wouldn't take a stand for what I know is the fact that these turbines generate far more noise than were ever planned and ever projected. It's wrong. I can look at my kids and say, I will defend you guys with everything I have. Tell me you guys will do the same thing. Shadow flickers continued. I was home today with my one and a half year old daughter. And I sat there and she stood in the window at 3 30 in the afternoon and blinked her eyes like this. adverse 
health effects that are being caused by the shadow player. Am I wrong? And if I am, I'd like to hear it from somebody. No, you're right. 